Good morning, everyone. My name is Diana, and I am one of your SI leaders this quarter for Bio 5B with Redick and Campbell. And today I'm going to be talking about animal form and function part one. So I'm going to start with talking about endotherms and ectotherms. Endotherm, endotherms you can always think of as warm-blooded. So endo means inside and thermic is heat. So as we have heat inside, we're endotherms, right? So the two warm-blooded vertebrate groups are birds and mammals, for example, you and I. So if you look at me in the snow down here on the right, um, you can see you can't see, but you know that my body is warm because we're warm-blooded and while the environment is cold around me, right? And so the next thing is ectotherms. Uh, ectotherms are cold-blooded animals, and this includes fish, amphibians, and reptiles, along with invertebrates that have an internal body temperature that changes with the environment temperature, right? So while we hold a kind of steady warm state, um, this lizard that we can see right here on the right is basking in the sun to gain heat from it. So it's going to take the temperature of the environment um, while we have our own temperatures. Okay, next we're going to talk about poikilotherms versus homeotherms. So homeotherms keep a relatively constant body temperature. So for example, humans have to stay at around 98 degrees Fahrenheit, or if we have serious complications. So here's me, a little homeotherm, and my body temperature is about 98 degrees, right? And if we look at the alligator in my hands, you wouldn't be able to tell that they're poikilotherms. So they have a temperature that varies with the surrounding environment. Um, so if the lake is colder one day than the other, then their body will acclimate to that temperature um, so they can survive. Okay, so the next topic covered is the four ways that heat can transfer. So the first is radiation. So all objects warmer than absolute zero will emit heat. So if you see me, here's my warm body in snow, then my body is going to radiate heat out into the environment. Okay, so the second is evaporation. So Evaporation is the removal of heat from the surface of liquid that is losing molecules as gas. So I have saliva in my mouth, and if I keep it open long enough towards the sun or towards a warm environment, then that liquid will evaporate out and will cool me down. Okay. We also see conduction. So Conduction is the direct transfer of heat from a warm to a cooler environment. So my body is a lot warmer than this block of ice that I'm holding. So my body is going to conduct heat into this block of ice. And the last one is convection. So transfer of heat by a movement of air or liquid past a surface. So if a little gust of wind passes by me, then I'm going to give up heat as by, by convection. Right. Okay, so now let's talk about the adaptations for thermal regulation. So the first is insulation. So as we see this very happy sea lion, um, he's probably really happy because he can stay warm in the cold ocean, right? So a lot of this is due to the insulation they carry um, in blubber or fat, um, which keeps this sea lion warm, right? So insulation is seen in blubber. It's also seen as skin, feathers on birds and whatnot, and also hair. OK, so the next adaptation is circulatory adaptation. So basically, if your body is feeling hot, then it will vasodilate. So your vessels will grow, and this will allow heat to leave, basically. And if your body is cold, it will vasoconstrict, which means your vessels get smaller. And this allows body to stay, I mean body, I mean heat to stay inside your vessel. Right. And the third is counter current exchange. So this one is a little more complicated. It's a little more complicated. Um, so if we look at this image, it explains it pretty well. 
So warm blood comes from your arteries out into the rest of your body, right? So from your core out into your extremities and et cetera. While it's passing blood that has come, for example, this one came from your foot and is a little bit cooler, then it's gonna get heat from the arterial blood, right? Does that make sense? So warm blood, let's say it's a really warm blood, it's coming down and cold blood is coming up. So just the way, like the way I passed heat onto the ice block, then the warm blood is gonna pass heat into the cooler blood. And that way our core never has cold blood, All right? So you can just take a minute and look at this image if you have time later, um, or pause it right here and just read this. Okay. The third um, adaptation for thermal regulation is evaporative heat loss. So like this little dog right here, many animals will pant for heat loss. Um, and so just like evaporation we saw um, from my mouth in the snow, this little dog in heat will also pant to um, cool itself down, right? We don't really pant as humans, but we do sweat and so do horses. Um, and so that's our way of cooling by evaporative heat loss. Okay, number four is behavioral responses. Um, and so this is changing your physical orientation or location in response to changes in temperature. So the example she gave was this little dragonfly. And when it's really hot outside, they kind of stick all of their body parts up towards the sun. And this will decrease the surface area that is visible to the sun, basically. And so behavioral responses is actually physically doing something um, to cool down, basically. And so this is the dragonfly. And the last one is adjusting metabolic, me adjusting metabolic heat production. So there's two different types of metabolic heat production. The first is shivering thermogenesis. And this is involuntary skeletal muscle contraction. Um, so like Patrick in this picture, he's physically shivering um, and that will try to warm you up. And there's also non-shivering thermogenesis. And this is activated um, heat production that comes from mitochondria rich tissue um, or brown fat. And so we've heard of brown fat usually in um, little babies. But we also have learned recently that we still carry brown fat that helps to keep us warm. So that's all I have for this video. Thank you for listening. Please sign in if you have not in the description and ask any questions if you have them. Bye.